What is music theory? The theory of what makes music work. If music is a language, unstable pitches won't resolve to those stable ones. It uses dissonance and consonance. Music was a story. The plot would be that we leave home, we come back to home. Resolution doesn't just come to a single tonic pitch, but really to a, a whole series of pitches that we come to know as a tonic pitch triad. So today we are going to talk about cadences. Music theory for worship. Yeah, we're making theory fun again, the way God wants it to be. Music theory for 490. If I were to say something to you in such a way that it leaves you wanting more, and then I were to come back and say something that resolves that sentence, it would be two phrases. You might say that we ended each phrase with what we call in music a cadence, uh, a stopping point. The first stopping point, as he turned his voice up, with a comma in English, we would call that a transient cadence still on its way to something. And then a terminal cadence would be when my voice is turned down. I well, remember how we had the pss and the pss earlier. So we've already dealt with transient and terminal cadences. We just haven't talked about those terms yet. So let's dive into some examples of what exactly a cadence is, uh, different types and uh, how those function. We have the first phrase. The first was transient. It was what we call a half cadence. It went from a one chord to a five chord. And then we went from five back to one. That five chord is called a dominant chord because... The only thing stronger than dominant is, is tonic. tonic. And we could look at the overtone series and see that that's true. You have root, root, fifth. That's the, the third harmonic. So it's the strongest of all the notes. It's a stable note. It's not as stable as one, though. So that uh, first phrase is marked by half cadence. Second phrase of Ode to Joy is marked by a perfect, authentic cadence, meaning that we move from our dominant harmony to our tonic harmony. And specifically, the melody is approaching tonic by step that it's landing on scale degree one. Mm -hmm. But the song isn't done yet. As we talked about before, there's a whole second half. That's not done. Finished on scale degree five. Yep, finished the same way as the second half did. And now we're even more finished. So what we're talking about right now is those transient cadences, the ones that don't quite feel finished. And we said, here's the half cadence, mm -hmm. we go one to five or four to five or something to five. What else is a transient cadence? You could actually end on a tonic harmony and have it be transient if your melody is not ending on scale degree one. You are kidding me. I kid you not. So we have an authentic cadence, five to one. Mm -hmm. But if the melody isn't on one, it's still not going to feel quite unfinished. right. Just as I am. You know that old invitation hymn? Oh, Lamb of God, I... There's a five chord. I come, I come. That's a tonic chord but the melody's on the third, and it just sounds like we need to sing another verse. It feels unfinished. Like it's, the invitation is still open. Let's sing one more verse. Other transient cadences. One of the best known transient cadences is the old deceptive cadence. We go from five to six. So let's say we were singing Amazing Grace. The worship leader I'm thinking, I want to sing Was Blind, but now I see, I want to sing it again. Was blind, but now I see. 
what I, what he did right there was he went from a one chord to a five chord. We are expecting a one chord. Instead, what we got was a six. Six. Minor which six. is shares a lot of the same notes as a one chord, and that's mm. why it sounds okay. Typically in worship music, what we'll do is we'll then loop that three times. It's one for the Father. For the Son. One for the Holy Spirit. But now I see was blind but now I see who I was blind but now I see all right so all of those are transient cadences and frankly there are more than there are terminal cadences and basically there are two kinds of terminal cadences that tell us I'm done. Perfect authentic cadence. Perfect because it's terminal and it feels like we should be done. Second is a perfect plagal. Again, using that word perfect in there because it just feels fine. The amen cadence. And it, it happens because da, 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 you've already da, left da, home. Da, you've come da, home. Da, 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 How can we make it feel like you really are home? Yeah, they're perfect authentic cadences. This time I really mean it. Amen for one. That's very really low. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the big thing to take away from this is that a cadence is typically marked by some type of use of the tonic harmony. In the end, Mr. Tonic and his friends, the stable notes, win. Now we have a special problem in today's oh. worship music because... We sing chord loops all the time. We, we don't use those traditional harmonies. And you say, so where's the perfect authentic cadence? Let's talk about that. One, four, six, five. Seems like it's a half cadence every time. One, four, six, five, one. That I sang until the downbeat that last time instead of stopping on the, on the uh, five chord. We call this phrase overlap um, because we've established there's a two bar phrase. I'm hating my pain. There's a second. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. We've overlapped into the next phrase, actually. And this is not uh, unique to worship music either. You'll find this a lot. Uh, especially with guitar-driven mm -hmm. music. I mean, it's incredibly more simple, right? So the way that we still have a sense of phrase and, and finishing it out is by messing with the phrases a little bit. It's going to be hard for you to believe, but uh, I wrote this song just to illustrate this uh, principle. I love you when I'm singing, and I love you when I pause. And when the song is over, I will love you cause I love you just because. I love you, Lord, because I love you. I love you, Lord, because I love you just because. Love you when I pause. I have no more to say, I'm parked on a four chord. Cause I love you just because. So now we know the song is over, extended it out until we got back to the tonic again. Heinrich Schenker says a song isn't over until the fat lady sings. He's... Okay, he said a song isn't over until the uh, scale degree one of the melody happens, aligns with a tonic harmony. You've probably sung through many songs that are one, five, six, four loop, and you, and you felt like you were stuck in it, right? I am stuck in this loop. And I don't know how to end, because it doesn't feel finished. And so, it would be a great way for us to end this video by demonstrating just a one more thing. And we'll do that by signing off and telling you that we really are for sure going to be 